Hello, everyone. Welcome. Episode 16 of Mostly Football. Tonight, we're back after a little hiatus. We're switching it up a bit. We're talking NFL news. We're talking WNBA awards. Playoffs are coming up, if you didn't know. We're talking Tom Brady potentially going to Las Vegas at some point. That was the news. And also, we're talking the brand new documentary featuring Mientai Teo and Lene Kiku, aka Runanai Tuya Sisopo. These are hard names, folks, and it's going to be an easy night. Here on Mostly Football. Hey. I might have to bring my that. soundboard for this. We're doing that little song from now on. At least that, until I get sick of that one. Dude, what's up? It's good to be back. We took a week off. I was in New York. What were you like doing? Weeks. I took Thank a trip you. back. You know, we had a we had a wedding to go to. My uh, my wife's a very good friend. She was the maid of honor in our wedding, so we returned the favor and went all the way back up there. Nice. We went to New Orleans this past weekend. Hey, yeah, okay. Some family, did some family visiting. Board of New Orleans. I love it. It was fun. It rained the whole weekend, but, you know. Always good to see family. How does your lovely daughter do on big trips like that? Well, she didn't go. She had school, unfortunately. Oh, okay. She had to go. But her last big trip, we had an eight-hour car ride. She did pretty good, you know. She, you just, as long as she has something to keep her attention, she'll be fine. And then she slept most of the ride, so. Yeah, you feel real bad. They're just strapped in there for, like, hours at a time. Right. And, uh. Yeah, it's rough. So, no, nah, she was good, but yeah, she didn't go. To, she didn't go this time. Um, hopefully, we can go another time. But it was, I ain't seen that part of my family in almost ten years. So, oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's fun. Yeah, so we had always good to see stuff. family. Usually, absolutely. absolutely. Um, we do have some NFL news and notes to talk about right away, sir. We're not going to waste any time with this. Jumping right into it. We have a lot of news to talk about as far as NFL goes. Absolutely. Just want to get some quick hitters out of the way here. Apparently, Tredavious White of the Buffalo Bills, um, that injury that affected him last Thanksgiving Day when he suffered a torn ACL, uh, still dealing with the effects of that. The yeah. Bills, according to NFL.com, will wait until August 30th, final roster cut in order to preserve his potential availability for week one. So they have the option to place him on the PUP, but I don't think they've done that yet. A um, couple of things here. Apparently Jacksonville has traded a seventh round draft pick next year for offensive guard Cole Van Lanen. Um, in Arizona, offensive lineman Justin Pugh is being checked out for a stinger. In Baltimore, they have placed running back Gus Edwards on the PUP list. I think he's going to miss the first few weeks of the season with that. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, apparently, center Tyler Linderbaum, the team's first-round draft choice this year, returned to the practice field after suffering a foot injury on August 4th. So that's good news for the Ravens. Um, Baltimore, or I mean Buffalo, sorry about that, has placed a guard, Ike Bodiger. We all know about good old Ike. On the PUP list, this was a big one here. Carolina, Matt Corral, <sighs> Liz that Frank injury. I was really rooting for him. That job was his. He suffered a Liz Frank injury, and now he's done for the season. That job was his. That job was most definitely his to win. He had that job, and then they gave it to Baker when he went down with that injury. I was like, oh, damn it. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say – I'll say he looked more inspiring than Sam Darnold for sure. And I think given more time, if Baker started to struggle, we would have seen Matt Corral maybe sooner than later. Uh, J.C. Jackson's out two to four weeks. The Chargers just – they're their big offseason acquisition. So he's he's looking – I think it was it a – what injury? A minor ankle, ankle surgery. So yep. he's going to be he, – he's going to be sidelined. And Tampa Bay, they got three big hits right now. They lost their guard and their center. And then Tristan Worfs is dealing with a 
bicep injury. Oh yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm be honest. The, the the biggest thing obviously is the guard in the center. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's your interior lineman, and they got to the center and the quarterback got to be on the same page. So I'm thinking with Brady, I'm thinking he has to be having like he has to be practicing with his his backups because uh, that that's not gonna. You can't have you can't have that type of miscommunication throughout the season. Not between quarterback and center. I can see a lot of high snaps, low snaps, untimed snaps. Yeah, I mean, I've always been one to believe that offensive guard is one of the more replaceable positions in the league. You know, you can usually get away with. I understand there's probably going to be a gap right between your starter and your backup, but when it comes to guard, usually don't feel it as much. You can like throw an athletic tackle in there sometimes and Mm -hmm. see what happens. But now you start talking about your center and Ryan Jensen, who came back just for you, just for Brady, you know, just to see, ride it out one last year. And then his backup goes down for the year. Hey, uh, and was that Hainsley or was Hainsley the one they thought might be done for the year? Anyway, they lose the backup to, Jensen, and then they thought the third uh, string guy went down for the season. So it turned out to be, I think, just cramps. Which is good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> point being, you, you may be able to lose like a guard or two. But once you start talking about your third string center and a guy in Tom Brady who needs to feel comfortable in the pocket, like he's not going to do bootlegs and rollouts and things like that at this point in his career. He needs to feel comfortable stepping up into the pocket to make those throws. So, yeah, in Tampa Bay, yeah, I mean, you want to believe in the GOAT, but it's just, one thing after another, and you start going, Eesh, uh, Chris Godwin, Jensen, and then I, Hainsley. I would believe in him if it was just Godwin. But you start you start ta- you start taking Brady's offensive line away from him. Yeah. That's gonna be a that's a whole different that's a whole different story right there. Like now he has to worry about Aaron Donald and a lot of these good nose tackles like Grady Jarrett. And you know, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a situation. Yeah, and it's taking all the the shine away from the defense because this is a defense that should be, you know, one of the top five in the league easily with all the guys they have coming back and the talent, you know, the young talent with Winfield and Vita Vea and Devin White. And I mean, it's just <clears throat> these guys take over games. So, you know, they're, they're still going to be the Bucks. They're still going to be in every game they play. It's just when you're not talking about peak Brady, Peak Brady seems like he needed Jensen to be in there, and now oh, he's just, definitely gonna need it. You gonna see? Yeah. It. I think I think we're gonna see a lot of miscommunication as far as like snaps goes, like early snaps, late snaps, shit that goes over Brady's head is gonna be too low. Does anything piss him off more than a uh, receiver running the wrong way and a snap going over his head? You know, there's nothing you, pisses him off more. You can't build that chemistry within a couple of weeks. I mean, yeah, you can try to build it throughout the season, but it's not going to be the same. Reported, you know, Mike Evans just came back to practice, supposedly has like a minor hamstring injury, but those type of in- things just, you know, he's been pr- he's been pretty durable. I guess he's only missed like seven games total his whole career, but still, you, you never hear like to hear things like that early in training camp. Yeah, well, here's another injury. Slant Man went down with a hamstring oh. injury. Yeah, he went down with a hamstring injury. So they- he, they they cap him out, so we we are gonna see how that you know how hamstring hamstring can be, they can they it can be a couple weeks or it can be a couple months, so we'll, they can we'll linger. See. We we can, we gonna see how that plays out. You uh, have to let it linger, as the cranberries would say, and the yeah. hamstrings do. Kevon Thibodeau, he went out last night. Ah, uh, I should have pulled up the highlight. Luckily, luckily they got lucky. They dodged the bullet. He's looking at three to four weeks, so. Uh, I think he may miss probably the first two weeks, but uh, I think they dodged the bullet here with this one. Um, he is he's gonna he he's gonna be a work. He, he's gonna be a project. He has the talent. He just needs to develop the. I can't think of the word that I'm thinking looking for. He, he just he needs a technique. Yeah, technique isn't yeah. there. He has the skill, he has the talent. The technique isn't there. Um, yeah. So the, this the hit that on Twitter were all over the place. The hit that happened last night. Uh, was it last night? Or sometime this weekend. Yeah. It could have been. I, I feel like I'm looking at it. I feel like it could have been avoided. A lot of people are like, 
oh, it's a dirty hit. I mean, I had to look at it a couple times. It's painful as shit to watch. It hurt my damn knee watching it. But yes. he hesitates. There's a part where, like, so he's coming down, and then there's a blocker coming to him. So he stops and he hesitates. And obviously the blocker, I'm like, I got to get lower than you. He gets low, and he just kind of – his the, the knee was just there. Hmm. And it's kind of buckled. But – Luckily, it's only it's only it's nothing serious. So they're looking at three to four weeks and not a season. So, um, who was it? The tackle that they drafted was it Evan Neal? Was his name? Yes, right from Alabama. Yeah, yeah. He he needs some work. They need yeah. to get him on like uh, one of those little uh, balance balls or something because he his first game was terrible. I ain't never seen an offensive lineman on the ground that many times. <laughs> I ain't he never seen it. Like yeah, you, you saw the flashes, but you saw the biggest, like the biggest hangups that people had about him was his balance. And dear God, that shit was awful. Like he was on the ground a lot. And this was news to me actually, because going into the draft, the things that I heard were, was Ikki Kwanu out of NC State was the more aggressive guy, but that Evan Neal was the more like technique refined, you know, mm-hmm. pro ready guy. That's and from what I like, I haven't I haven't seen a lot of him, but the, the plays I have seen, yeah, he's been off balance. Guys just like blow right by him because he doesn't have his feet under him. It, it's just it's been kind of rough so far. And it reminds me of Andrew Thomas. You know, Andrew Thomas's rookie year was pretty rough, so hopefully he can pick it up. But yeah, right now, if, if you're Daniel Jones and you're looking to have a better year after, <laughs> after last season and you've never felt comfortable behind this Giants offensive line since you've been drafted. <laughs> It's not looking any better right now. You're scared. You're super scared. I mean, look at injuries. I mean, they just signed Max Garcia off the street as their center. So I am terrified if I'm Daniel Jones. I am extremely scared. Saquon yeah. better hope he better hope Saquon has uh, the breakout year. Because if I'm Daniel Jones, I am scared. Because that's your tackle. Like he he he's the guy that's keeping off Nick Bosa and Joey Bosa <laughs> off your ass. Yeah. That's the, he's keeping he's keeping guys like Aaron Donald when he's on the edge occasionally. He's keeping those guys off your ass. And he be on his face on his ass. It's a done deal. <laughs> and to be fair to him, in that game, you know, he looked pretty sharp. He was getting the ball out quick. So that he's gonna have to do a lot of that this season is get the ball out to Saquon in space, get the ball out to guys like Kadarius Tony and uh Wandell Robinson in space. And they need to be creative under Brian Dable because I don't think this offensive line play is gonna do them any favors. No, no, it's it's not. It's it's really not. Unless Saquon can get back to rookie rookie year, Saquon, it, it's not. I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm definitely not afraid of you. Um, there's one other guy that I have seen that has been really fucking impressive. And that's Malik Willis. I don't know if you've okay. seen his highlights. The the kid. Uh- the the, the 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 ones I've seen are good. There's been some real low lights as well. Yes, but yeah, yes. no, I've they they there's some low lights, and there's and it's the rookie year. You're gonna have your low lights, yeah. but I think those like it'll come with time. Obviously, you know him him going through his progressions. Like I think there was one play this past weekend where he dropped back, and I think he threw it incomplete. But there was a guy like wide open underneath. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's 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 something that's gonna come with time. That's gonna be like me getting through my progression, keeping keep my head together, make sure I'm not watching a rush and keep my eyes downfield. I think that's gonna come with time. But I wanna see all in all. If Tannehill, I'm gonna be like this, and he's gonna regret what he said. If Tannehill has a couple bad games, I don't see Mike Vrabel hesitating to put Malik Willis in the game. I'm just going to be honest. I don't see him hesitating on that one. I think it's going to be tough for, it's certainly going to be tough for Tannehill to look as good as he had these past few seasons with the receiver core the way it is right now. Oh, it's bad. There has been no positive news about Traylon Burks recently. Uh, Your top receiver right now is uh, Robert Woods coming off injury, you know, so. They need Derrick Henry to be very good. They need him to be fully recovered. And uh, Brian Tannehill has been a good quarterback in Tennessee, but he needs to be a very good quarterback if they're going to repeat as uh, champions in this division. Hey, and this is this is my issue. This is this is my biggest issue. 
if I'm a quarter, if I'm if I'm a head coach, I don't want to rely heavily on Derrick Henry. Right. That's the thing because it has worked. I mean, it works, but the human body can only take so much punishment. <laughs> yeah. right? And you saw it last year. This yeah. is, I mean, you can only take so much punishment before it's like your body's like, all right, all right, we're gonna take a time out here. <laughs> we gotta take a time out. And, and the then now you're still like, he's built like Hercules. I mean, you yeah. couldn't find a, a more freakish body. Right. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, you look at you, you gotta look at it this way. He's what six four? He's like what six four? All right. Yeah, six, he's an, he's enormous. Somewhere around there, like 230, 240. You got to expect these guys, these linebackers, these safeties, they're not coming for you up top. Right. They're coming for your knees. And I don't <laughs> yeah. give a shit how much muscle you have. It's like chopping down a redwood. And you got to think about it. You only, you really only get, let's see. So you play on Sunday. You probably rest on Monday, maybe Tuesday. You turn around here, practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're at home, you you stay at home. So you get the rest probably Saturday. You got a, a quick walkthrough, and then you back at it Sunday. If you got a short week, if you play Thursday, like bro, you don't have time. You don't have a lot of time to heal. So if if I'm get if I'm getting hit constantly by linebackers and safeties in my knees and I don't have time. Dude, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a toll after. you giving me what? 20, between 20 to 25 touches a game? That's a lot of punishment. Yeah, That's 60 minutes worth of punishment. Like At some point, you you got to figure it out. At some point, your wide receivers are going to have to make plays. Traylon Burke, you, you made that dumb fucking mistake and <laughs> traded AJ Burke. I'd have never traded. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have traded him. Not not for a first round, not for a draft pick. No, give me give me something in return. Because now you stuck with Traylon Burke, and I ain't heard anything good about him so far. <laughs> Only thing I heard was he was out of shape. I heard he, I heard that his car, his his cardio was horrible. I've heard that, but I'm. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna rely on a bunch of grocery bag boys to to <laughs> to what? Is 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 the the offense is going to go through Derrick Henry? Yes. Everybody knows it's going to go through Derrick Henry. We're going to put eight in a box, and we're going to dare you to throw it. We're going to we're going to force you to throw the ball to Traylon Burks. He's going to have to grow up. Who the hell is it? This play? this is like I mean I I can't you know that's not one of those defenses you can name. It's not like the Tampa Bay where it's like this guy that guy, but you know. Harold Landry, uh, Bud Dupree, Jeffrey Simmons, uh, you know, young cornerbacks in Fulton and Farley, and uh, I think BR, Kevin Bayard still on this team. So, I mean, you got, I mean, yeah, but I mean, defense is there. But if, but if, if you're, if you're not scoring points, right? I mean, you, I'm gonna put I'm a prime example: the 2016 Atlanta Falcons. Our defense was shit. It was not a great defense. We gave up a lot of points. The only reason why we got as far as we did is because our offense was putting up more points. We were outscoring off. I can remember the game we played against the, the Saints. Like, we were blowing their asses out. And at one point, our defense just said, fuck it, we don't want to play no more. And we almost lost the game. Luckily, we had a strip sack. I think we had a strip sack that game. But at the end of the day, we gave up a ton of points and a ton of yards. But yeah. we were scoring more points. But if your defense is constantly on the field because your offense can't score points, and they're relying on Derrick Henry. At some point, you got to figure it out. Like something's got to give, and that's why I think Malik Willis is going to be able to come in, and he's going to do what Tannehill can't, and that's run the read option. I do wonder if they're going to do like uh, you know, what the Ravens did when they had Lamar and Flacco. Uh, the Eagles did this when they had Wentz and Jalen Hurts his rookie year. Like you know, a few packages here and there to get the juice going. A few play, uh, you know read options, stuff like that. Just a few packages here and there to get the juices going. I think the Niners did it with Trey Lance as well. They might they might have a few packages for Willis throughout I hope the year. So, too. Because I guess if I'm looking at looking at their offense, they don't have a lot. They don't have a lot to hang their hats on. Are you giving enough credit to the fact that your boy Austin Hooper is on this team? 
I would give. Have you, have you thought Austin about Hooper, that long enough? Austin, Austin Hooper is going to. He's going to be that safety blanket for Tannehill or Malik Willis. But again, he's not. He's not a deep threat. You don't think I, he could bust a field wide open like Kyle Pitts? No, 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 no. He he might he'll 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 make a he'll he'll make tough catches. He'll make the contested catches against safety. He'll outrun your linebackers. But at the end of the day, I can still put eight in a box and keep him covered one on one. Like that's the thing. Like you're you have to show me. They have to show me as a defensive coordinator that I need to fear your weapons. I, only person we fear is Derek Henry because. I got to protect my box because I'm not going to let him run for 400 yards on me. I think Tannehill and Woods are going to have a nice connection because Tannehill is good with timing and Woods is good with routes and timing. But Woods is not going to bust open the offense. He's not going to take, um, you know, a touchdown 80 yards. So they do need Burks to be explosive. Not, if, not after the ACL injury. Right. Mm -hmm. They need Burks to be explosive for sure. He's going to have to. Yep. Um, and going back to the Thibodeau injury – uh, the vibe I got online, you know, there were plenty of guys who wanted to be, um, you know, play the victim and be, oh, my God, what a dirty hit. And I, I, Emmanuel Acho said it was a cowardly hit. Emmanuel and, Acho, I want to – listen. All right. So, so Damien, Damien Woody calls him out on that, and then Acho says, I didn't say it was dirty. Yeah, well, he said it was cowardly. Emmanuel but, Acho, I hate him. <laughs> don't like him. Let's air it out. He was shut up. And go sit down somewhere for a man who played the sport he talks like one who hasn't okay shit happen listen these type of injuries happen who was it who was it that tore the, that it was i remember it was a, it was a game against Kansas City and it was a blitz the running back stepped up took the linebacker out at the knees and he blew his knee out it wasn't intentional it was just a part of the game. Mm -hmm. And you get it, it's just for me, it's like when people see you're you're listen, your lower half, especially if you're a big man, is a target. Oh, yeah. I'm not about to take you out. If I'm going, if I was playing Derrick Henry, even if I was 6'4, 250, I'm not taking this man out at the top because one or two things is gonna happen, and more than likely with him coming downfield downhill. I'm losing this matchup if I go up top. <laughs> Many a man. Been like me. yeah. and, he, and if that, you're going to get stiff hand. We all saw Josh Norman. We all saw, we, we all saw Earl Thomas. We saw it. Mm. I'm taking you down at the knees. You're not putting <laughs> me on a T-shirt. You're not making me a highlight. You're not doing it. I'm going to yeah. take you down at the knees. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just attacking. So when you see stuff like that, People, people. Anytime someone see someone getting taken out at the lazy, they like, "Oh, it's a dirty hit." If he was engaged with the lineman, and it happened, I would one hundred percent say, "Yeah, that was a fucking dirty hit." He put himself in that situation. The the yeah. one thing you, the one thing I was always told when I played linebacker and safety was never stop running. Because if you the moment you hesitate or you stop moving is the moment you become a target. Yeah, I'm. I've had my ear hole blown out, and that shit hurts. I've been crack blocked. That shit is painful. Oh yeah, just because you hesitate, you hesitate. This is a done deal. It is an extremely done deal. I met a running back in the hole as a linebacker, and because I hesitated, I ended up on my back. Exactly. You got like, to keep moving. Flew through the air and landed on my back. If you if you stop, the moment you stop moving is the moment you become a target. And that's what happened. He hesitates. And there was someone who was talking about it. It was like, watch him. He hesitates. And when he hesitates, because that blocker was expecting him to keep coming. Yeah. He stops. All right. I got to do my job. And he did his job. Well, first and foremost, I think what's kind of lost in all this is the guy who blocked Kayvon Thibodeau, number 81 for the Bengals, is – Thaddeus Moss, I mean, son of perhaps the greatest wide receiver of all time, Randy Moss. Exactly. So I think a lot of guys are probably talking shit about him, realizing later who he is and then being like, ah, oh, shit, I don't want to look bad in front of Randy. So they're probably taking walking that back. And then it's like, yeah, I mean, uh, everyone was saying, oh, well, we got TJ in the chat here. Nicole Brown, Simpson, and Ultimate Warrior both on live because of the juice. Jesus. TJ, I think 
Nate, you know what he means? I, I know exactly what he means, but I'm not going down that road. Oh, okay. I like an inside joke between you two. But no, I, I, yeah. So it, it was a legal block. It was within the tackle box. He wasn't engaged, like you said. And the way I've seen no most problem. defenders like successfully take on that block is you kind of matador him aside. Like you, you have your arms out, you swing your body to the side, and you don't stop and turn your leg no. so that he busts you <laughs> wide <laughs> open. Like it's the craziest way to take on that block. Because when I first heard it, I was like, mm, let me. I was like, let me look at this shit. And then I watched it. And then I was like, I thought I was like, initially in my mind, I was like, yeah, that was a dirty hit. But then you watch it and he, 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 he stops, bro. He stops. Like he, he's running and he stops and he's like, he hesitates and it's, it's too, it's too late at this, at this point, bro, it's done. You, you put yourself, yeah. luckily you were able to avoid serious injury and you never want to see anybody get injured, but you got to be smart. You got to know the game. And that's why I say the technique part. You, you got to take that block on. You can't hesitate. You can't be like, oh, shit, oh, what's happening? You got to know where the ball's at. You got to know where it's going. So it sucks that he's injured, but luckily, like I said, he's avoided ma- major injuries. So he'll be fine. But, yeah, there were, some, uh, there were some other things that happened over the weekend, like preseason game-wise. The Cardinals took on the Ravens. Uh, it, it, I like, I like oh, watching I like- guys like Trace McSorley, you know, he's just fun to watch in the preseason. Uh, Tyler Huntley, the backup for the Baltimore. Like, those guys who get a chance to, like, really roll around, show off their athleticism, show what they can do when the play breaks down. Like, they're a lot of fun to watch. And then, uh, yeah, who'd you bring up there? Coach Kyler. If you, Coach Kyler, you, how about that? Did, Coach Coach he Kyler his, did he have on his gaming headset? Yeah, he did. He had the headset. He was doing. He was coaching. He was, he was calling the plays on the sideline. He had. You know how the coaches they do? Do they cover their face with the play, with the play sheet? He did all yeah. that. I was like, oh, look. He calling the plays. Uh, unfortunately, the the team didn't really execute the plays that was being called correctly. But you know, hey, <laughs> you know, they've got some young guys. I mean, uh, first of all, what what do you what do you think of their black helmets? I love those helmets. The, the black helmets with the red shine with the red uh, tint to them, dude. Probably the best helmets in the game right now. Okay, so here's why. I, because as a Falcons fan, don't you feel like they're stealing a little bit of that Dirty Bird Thunder? No, oh, they, they probably are, but they do it better than we did, and we didn't think about it. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'll take it. Right. I like the helmet. I, I, I really hey. do. I like their helmets. I like your take on that. They wore it better than we did, so they can have it. Yeah, because um, I feel like red's a big part of our, our helmet scheme, or our color scheme, and I don't, I, I don't feel like we use it enough. Like that's when like I don't feel like we use the color red enough, and I and the shitty jerseys that these this this wait this one here this shit Fubu jersey here I hate these jerseys, <laughs> I hate them. I hate like them. When they released them last year, I hate them. Yeah, I don't I don't know why teams don't like lean into like try to look like what the animal looks like. You know, like, I don't I have a little bit more pattern to it. Like, I, don't, I don't I don't me personally I feel like. Here's my thing. Like, I get it. As the league, you want to be uniform. Cool. But let's spice this shit up. Yeah. Let's, these, let, let, let's let these teams get creative with their color schemes, their helmets, their cleats, their jerseys, their pants. Let them get – let's let them get creative. Because at this point, this shit's boring. Nah, I don't give it – I mean, I can't really see – I mean, the Jets, all black jerseys with their black helmets going to be – that's gonna be a, a, a that's gonna be a nice ass fucking uniform this year. The the Bengals with the all white finally after fucking yes. decades. Yes. After exactly. decades. Exactly. Like and you know, I mean, the designs are out there. Like I've seen uh, for years now. People come out with the coolest designs for NFL teams to use, but I don't know. Hopefully they spice it up a bit. But what, speaking of the Falcons, I mean they had a game themselves. They played against the Detroit Lions. Was that their most recent game? Nah, Jets last night, Monday night. Yes, football. that's right. Okay. Yeah, so what did you see against the Jets? Who'd you like? Who'd you not like? What's so, working? I'm going to go start with the Lions first. The Lions first, I'm enjoying Mar- Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota looks like he has a lot to prove. And he has yes. a big-ass chip on his shoulder. And he's looking to prove that he can still be that number one pick from yes. those years ago. 
and he's looking like it. The connection between him and uh Kyle Pitts, I like it. They're they're building chemistry fast, and it's gonna show out when the regular season starts. Now, as for Desmond Ritter, Desmond Ritter is looking, he's I like him. Great A. The kid can make plays, he's mobile. Our offense this year is gonna be a lot of running. It's gonna be a lot of moving the pocket, a lot of play action. Cause we they did a shit ton of play actions last night, and yeah. boy did the Jets get their asses torched for it. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. It's like it was like they just said, uh, we don't know what they're running, even though we know they just ran play action, so we're gonna bite on a play action again. I think it was was it the very first play or one of the first plays? Kyle Pitts gets it's loose on the sideline. Yards. Yeah, it it was it was he it, it's. They're gonna move. They're gonna move this pocket. Desmond Ritter is probably gonna play a lot this season. Not too much. He's gonna have some packages. I think he's gonna come in and and be able to help the team out. But Marcus Mariota, for the most part, is gonna be our number one QB, and he is going to show out the mobility he still has. Um, I'm a little concerned, like we spoke about before the show started. I'm a little concerned about Drake London. Um, he took his first hit on against the D- Detroit Lions and he got hurt. So I'm a little concerned. <laughs> you know, that's, that's never a good time. I mean, it time. was like a 24 yard gain for what it's it was, worth. So. It was 24 yards, you know, it was a regular hit, nothing too crazy. He didn't fall weird, he didn't step weird, he just hit the ground and then he just didn't get up. I'm a little worried, a little concerned. I don't need my first round draft pick made out of glass. I don't need that. Yeah. But Defense is still a little suspect. Still a little suspect. Um, we do have some guys that are showing out in our secondary, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Okay. Um, I just need I need to see more of the pass rush. Obviously, I don't think they're going to go into their bag in the preseason, but um, I need to see I need to see a pass rush. We hadn't we drafted uh, Abby Katie from Penn State. We drafted the other kid. I don't know where he the hell he was drafted from. Uh, the guy from Western Kentucky, right? Robinson? No, 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 no. It was another one. We drafted him in a second. We drafted him in the second round. We drafted him after we got Abikati. Oh, okay. So we got we had they drafted the pass rushers. We even got what's his name? Troy Anderson. I yep. mean, he showed out against the Jets. He had a, I think he had a good play against last night. But okay. for me, it's just like I need to see a pass rush. I need to see quarter, I need to see a quarterback pressure. I need to see us move quarterbacks off their spots. I don't care if we need chasing. We need. I need to see that. I didn't. I haven't seen a lot of it. I caught flashes of it last night. A couple of flashes. We had a couple of sacks against um, the Lions, but I need to see more. I'd like to see them make a move for someone maybe down in Jacksonville. Arden Key's kind of been like showing out. You know, if they could get someone like that, someone who's, you know, maybe someone in Buffalo who just. Really needs to prove himself again and just a second time around. But they've done it before, you know. They tried it with Dante Fowler, but um, yeah, they just if it's not if it's not working right now, you need to address that problem because Dean Pease, you know, I saw that quote from him the other night that he's you know he's sick of it. You know, he's tired of the Falcons being in the bottom half of the league in defense and he's trying to change the culture. So you got to you got to bring it. And the thing is, it's not even it's it's really it's really about. You got to put it on coaching at this point. You got to put yeah. it on scheme. Yeah, you got to put it. You got to put it on scheme. You got to put it on the where is he putting players? Like, and then at that point, you know, once the scheme is set, now you got to look at players. What are they doing? I mean, Grady Jarrett's been good since he's been here. He's gonna need help. We had a guy, fucking. If I ever. And I'm gonna say this on I'm gonna say this on live. If I ever, <laughs> ever run into Eddie Goldman in public, I'm going to shoot him in his kneecap. Oh no, we said it. Eddie's Eddie, just kidding. He's gonna metaphorically do that. He's gonna nope, think about it. No, no, no. He's I'm definitely not saying he's definitely not threatening to shoot your kneecaps. I'm going to blow his kneecap off with a okay? metaphorical gun. No. That is bullshit. <laughs> With an unregistered 22. <laughs> Why, bro? Why did you do that to us? I was excited. I was do you have no idea how excited I was when I saw his name come across my phone? 
Well, speaking of making moves and speaking of former Bears, you did say you'd like to see them make a move for a oh, particular course, linebacker. It would be if we can if I would say let's let Deion Jones get healthy. Roquan Smith is unhappy. Yes. He is he, back in practice for the Bears, just so everyone knows if you don't know. He said he says that the new or the new office doesn't value him that much. Cool. We'll take him. We'll show him value. <laughs> we'll, you take Deion Jones in a third round pick, and we'll take him off your hands. Yeah. Because I want I here's my thing. Deion Jones was good. Deion Jones, he said he changed the game because he was that he was the first he was that first type of linebacker that that small statue but the speed. Yeah. And then everyone else started following suit. The problem yep. is, like every goddamn thing else in this damn league, everyone who did it did it better than we did. <laughs> okay, so we drafted this tiny bastard. I think he's at like two thirty, six foot, six foot or six one at two thirty. What the fuck are we gonna do at two thirty? So what happened was, offenses they started getting bigger. So now the linemen are bigger. So now you're used to this. At run at blitzing, you get held up at the line. You can't do shit. All you can do is run sideline and sideline. What good are you? You can't cover tight ends. I mean that the Super Bowl year he was excellent. Yes, that was what coming off his second year. I think that yeah. was his second year in the league. Yeah, because at that point nothing was really nothing was really done yet. In that three four, which is what they're running, like they they needed. They just didn't. They haven't had the personnel they needed to collect, take up multiple guys on the line. So the bigger offensive linemen, if you're not commanding double teams like they have not been doing in Atlanta, whether they've drafted, you know, a, a Tack McKinley or I remember um, even going back to like Hagman, you know, a long time ago uh, from uh, I Minnesota. I had a lot of hope for that kid. So I, I had mean, a lot of hope for him. Yeah, you know, Marlon Davidson, like that, a lot of guys in and out of here. That yeah, we even had Don Terry Poe at one point, yep. and he didn't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, so that they've been trying to run the three four unsuccessfully. I think but we just I think they're doing more of a four three now, but I mean, every team is mostly doing nickel anyway. So I, I think that, and and that, like I said, for me at this point, I'm ready to get rid of all of Dan Quinn's guys, as at least the defensive guys, because it's at this point they're not panning out. Deion Jones, where do you put him? I don't, I can't see where do you put it because we need – if he's going to be my middle, I need somebody. I need something solid in the middle because yeah. if, if all they got to do is run a center at you and they take you out the play, what good are you? Now, who is the other projected line? Is it Michael Walker? Yeah, Michael Walker. He okay. – I've been the last thing I heard, like they said, he is improving. Like he is becoming that general of the defense, the play caller of the defense. And I'm that shit makes me happy. Absolutely. If, if we can get that going, then I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? So like that's like there, there are people that are, there are guys that are stepping up. The problem is I don't need them to just step up. Like I need <laughs> you to come in and make a difference. Like I need you to come in and be like, this is a game changer, and like eight, let me put like AJ Terrell has been a solid assassin for his first yeah. two years in the league. He's not getting the credit he deserves. No. He he, I don't think he didn't give up a touchdown last year. He had, I think, he was in a top ten for QBR, and I'm like, we need help. So we went and we went and got Casey Hayward. I'm a little iffy on that one. I gotta I gotta see Casey Hayward. I gotta see him. I gotta see if he can become the Casey Hayward that the Chargers drafted. Right. Like, that's the Casey Hayward. I don't need Las Vegas Casey Hayward. I, yeah, I, need, I need I need the Chargers yeah. Casey Hayward. That's what I, rough season. Yeah, I, I need the real I need the real Casey Hayward to, to show up this season. So offensively, I'm not really concerned because you can do a lot with very little on offense. You can, you know, as long as you got a, a, a decent play caller, you can do a lot with a little. Is the defense uh, I got a problem with that? It's funny you're. It's funny that you have like that little concern offensively for Atlanta, but when it comes to Tennessee, you're like, oh man, I don't know. It's like essentially the same offense too. I mean, the reason why I say that is because <clears throat> you you they rely heavily on one person. 
We don't rely heavily on one person. If Derrick Henry goes down, your season's over. You don't have A.J. Brown. You don't have Julio Jones. You if Derrick Henry goes down again for the year, your season is over. You're dead oh. in the water at this By point. By the way, Atlanta fans, just so you know, I am officially El Presidente of the Olamade Zacchaeus fan club. Oh, my God. Nate no longer has rights. If Olamade Zacchaeus ends up being – Wide receiver one for this team and absolutely lighting the NFL on fire. Just remember that I am the number one fan. (laughs) He's not. And what I really like about Marcus, too, that I never saw before, is he's actually playing with confidence and, like, his job depends on it. Absolutely. And he's getting the ball out quickly, and he's moving around with confidence, and he's making – he's diving into the end zone, so – like yeah. that's the markers you need to see. I think I think I think him getting this second chance was a wake up call. Like I think him getting benched in Tennessee, then getting cut, then getting signed as a backup for ba- for Vegas, and then yep. being there for those years and only getting in to do a couple trick plays. And I think him getting this opportunity, he's like, okay, this is my opportunity. I can't blow this. And to still have the fire, because I don't blame anyone for going, you know what? This backup quarterback job is the best job you could have. I just hold this clipboard and make millions of dollars every week. Like, give somebody it to paid me. Somebody came to me and was like, hey, we're going <laughs> to sign you to a three-year deal worth $2.4 million. All you have to do is stand on the sidelines and hope you don't have to get in. That's it? All right. Cool. That's it. Because when I get in, guess what? I just got to hand the ball off. <laughs> I'm not doing much nothing else. Yes, I would do this. That's who, who that's why they got that's why they got guys like ah oh, damn, I can't think of his name. Chase Daniel. Uh, Chase Daniels is one. There's another who's the, the guy who played for the Jets. Um I can't think of his name. Oh fuck me. I don't know. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it because he's gonna bother me. Do you have another story in the sports world here? Uh, this past weekend. At a UFC fight, big UFC fight, UFC 278, this from USA Today, Leon Edwards stuns Kamaru Usman with head kick KO to capture welterweight title at UFC 278. Uh, This from Nolan King, just win from MMA Junkie, just when it looked like the writing was on the wall, Leon Edwards shocked the world and did the seemingly unthinkable in the UFC 278 main event Saturday at Vivint. Vivint Arena in Salt Lake City. Edwards, 20, 20 and 3 in MMA, 12 and 2 in UFC. Knocked out welterweight champion Kamaro Usman, 20 and 2 in MMA, 15 and 1 UFC. Unconscious with a Hail Mary head kick at 4 minutes and 4 seconds of round 5. Wow, did not know it was that close to the end. Holy cow. Yeah, the head kick. He, he went to protect his face and he blocked the wrong thing. And he caught a kick, caught an ankle, right? Ankle shin, right to the face. I was like, man. <laughs> well, because I had I didn't have him lose. I'm like, man, just like that. And the fight's over. Uh the knockout blow came after nearly four rounds of relative domination by the champion Usman, who stifled Edwards with strong cardio, grappling, and control. Edwards looked noticeably frustrated at times, but ultimately scored. The result he wanted in all time fashion. A left high kick blocked out of the line of sight uh, of Usman by a left jab, slipped up and cranked the champion who folded in lawn chair fashion as he gazed blankly at the ceiling lights. Poor guy. And uh, here we have the picture. Ah, uh, that's just rough. It's rough when I, I don't know if he was setting him up. I would imagine he was throughout. Well, he definitely fight, set but- him up. Cause he, yeah, he, if you're throwing he, he, like he, low he, kicks and mid-range kicks to the guy and you land enough shots to where they start blocking low and you finally time that head kick just right, I mean, you see. He caught the shankle right to the face, right there. All shankle. That's oh, just man. awful. That's just fantastic. That's- let's, see the, uh, let's see the post-fight interview here real quick from uh, Edwards. We can win the battle from the UK. I told you. Now look at me now. Look at me now. And he called his mom after. Juiced, absolutely juiced. I love it. You love to see it. He called, uh, and he called his mom. Did you want to transition into what you had next, sir? Or would you like to talk Tom Brady first? 
Let's talk Tom Brady first. Okay. I like it. Um, Josh this McCown, that's his name. <laughs> uh, I call it Viva Las Brady. <sighs> I, I saw this. I saw this. I was eating tacos for lunch. And I look over and I see this on the screen. And I'm like, there's no fucking way this is true. But Brady was on the he was on the shop with LeBron James. And he mentioned the motherfucker. And nobody knew who the MF was until now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now everybody knows who the MF is. And, you know, I remember when Tom was leaving New England, there were, like, strong, strong rumors that he was going to Vegas, and I was all in. To, I was all in. I was like, he's definitely going. Like, they've got Gruden coming. They've got this new stadium. Like, they're going all in on this thing. And it didn't pan out, but uh, I thought for John, sure he was heading to Vegas early. Hey, John, you're an idiot. I want you to know that. You're an idiot, okay? You're a fucking moron. You had an opportunity. John Gruden talking to Gruden is an idiot. You had an opportunity to have two of the greatest players come to Vegas and potentially win Super Bowls with. Well, hold on, hold on. No, there's no hold on. He's an idiot. Stone Cold idiot. Only only someone. Only someone with a brain tumor would have done something this stupid. Maybe it's not his fault. Let's find out from Dana White here. Apparently, he was on uh, UFC 278 with the Gronks, is what I'm seeing. Uh, apparently, there's more than one Gronk. There's a lot of Gronks. <laughs> <laughs> there's many Gronks I'm seeing here. But, uh, yeah, let's see what uh, UFC President Dana White had to say about this whole Tom Brady situation. Any minute now. I know it's going to load up. Don't do this to me. It's going to do it to you. Wow, put me on the spot here. Dude, I had it all loaded up. Anyway. I'm just, I have to say this. John Gruden has to have been short yellow bus retarded. He had to have been helmet on head, drool on shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Tom was a free agent about, about like two, two, what was, was it, two, two, three years, years ago before, before uh, he, went he went to Tampa. Tampa. You, you gave, gave him a recruiting, recruiting pitch on why he should join the Vegas Raiders. Raiders. What, what went wrong, wrong with that recruiting, recruiting pitch that you gave him? <laughs> <laughs> Do I really Probably care gonna get cut for this. You got the fight going on at the same time. Dana White's going to find me and kick my ass. You can give a brief story. You don't got to go too much in details because you never know. I, I could have been in Vegas with you for the last three years, man. Oh. <laughs> no, you you would have been. So I would have been. I'm the one. I, I, I worked to put that deal together for Brady and Gronk to come to the race. And, and it was, it was almost, almost a done, a done deal. deal. And, and at, at the, the last, last minute, minute, Gruden, Gruden blew, blew the deal up and, and said that he didn't want it. Uh, and you were right. Oh, oh, no, broke you man. were right. It was crazy. crazy. And, and, and Brady was, was already looking, looking at houses. And it wasn't being said yet that Gronk was coming. So Las Vegas would have had Brady and Gronk the year that the Bucks won the Super Bowl. Except Gruden blew the deal up. And there's so much story that goes... Along with this behind the scenes, and I, 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 you can stop it. Just, just, just stop it. So you were right. Uh, Gruden, Gruden, John Gruden, your car. John Gruden, John fucking Gruden. You had an opportunity to have, not arguably. There's no argument here. There's no arguing with Tom Brady. This isn't like LeBron James and Michael Jordan, Michael Irvin and Michael. There's no arguing here. Tom Brady is the GOAT of the NFL, period. There's no one close. It's not an argument. There's no one close to Brady. There's a big-ass 600-mile gap between the next, but him and the next person, okay? Yeah, that's not how you talk to, apparently. There's no – you're an idiot if you believe that there's someone close to Brady, okay? You're an idiot. 
John Not Gruden. Even Cam Newton. John Gruden is by far the dumbest individual <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. Hearing this story, I take back all of the <laughs> that I've ever put up for him. You're an idiot. You deserve to be fired. You deserve to be at home sitting on your couch because you're a moron. You're a moron. Well, you the thing have is, an opportunity. Like, there is no now, excuse. There ain't no excuse. No, false. There's no excuse. You chose Derek Carr. Derek fucking Carr. Over Tom Brady? Yeah. De I would trade Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Kelvin Ridley, Todd Gurley when we had him. I would trade my entire 2016 Falcons team for Tom Brady. I would trade in a heartbeat. You would you couldn't. There's nothing. No. I would trade Kyle Pitts right now for Tom Brady. And this is after people already was questioning the, you know, move to trade Khalil Mack. Like, I was like, what are you doing there? You know, their franchise Stupid. defensive player. You had an opportunity to have Tom Brady come to Vegas and yeah. play. Derek Carr is dookie water. Okay? <laughs> He's not good. Like, and the, could and have the, came in your brand new stadium the year know, they won the Super Bowl. Like. And you chose Derek Carr over Tom Brady? The man likes Derek Carr. You that's who you chose Derek Carr. Derek Carr had one good season and 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 he broke his leg to end that good season. Derek Carr has not been good since then. Listen, you, I'm not gonna knock the guy who ran the QB camp. He knows how to evaluate quarterbacks. You chose Derek Carr <laughs> over Gronk and Brady. John Gruden. I hope you get hemorrhoids. I oh. hope you're I hope every bone in your body starts to ache. I hope you have back pain for the rest of your life. Because you're an I hope idiot. you're just like my co-host Dylan. You're an idiot. Hemorrhoids and back pain. Just when I they, I was like, there's I was like, there's no way this is true. I was like, there's no way, there's no way a NFL coach. Blew up, signed a 10 year deal with the opportunity to do whatever he wanted. Blew up a deal because he wanted to keep Derek Carr. Well, I want to go from one subject that made you really upset to another subject that makes you really upset, and that is the WNBA. Oh, the WNBA did. did. Let, let's get to the awards. Uh, before you get your say in here, I want to just, you know, read out some names here. So from CBS Sports, we uh, finally have the WNBA awards picks. Aja Wilson for historic MVP, defensive player of the year. Uh, Rin Howard, or is it Ryan Howard? Sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Do you know if it's Rin or Ryan? Dip in the, know, keep up I with this know. one. Don't know and don't care. Come on, you know your WNBA stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, from Jack Maloney. And Skylar Diggins. <laughs> Jack Maloney, you know, famous uh, reporter covering the WNBA, says here, the W 2022 WNBA regular season has come to an end, which we all knew. And after all sorts of drama on the final day, the playoffs are set. Eight teams will now battle it out for this year's title. The postseason action set the tip off on Wednesday night. Tomorrow night, don't miss it. Uh, with two first-round game ones featuring Chicago Sky versus the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces against the Phoenix Mercury. Can I just say, I do like the names in the WNBA. So don't get me wrong, the that. names are good. The teams aren't, but the names are. Names are great. <laughs> Before we turn our full attention to the playoffs, it's worth honoring the best of the best from the regular season. Uh, this was perhaps the toughest awards bout to fill out of recent memory, particularly because the races for MVP and Defensive Player of the Year were so narrow. Without further ado, let's get to the picks. MVP, Aja Wilson of the Las Vegas Aces. Um, she averaged 9.5 points, 9.4 rebounds, and 1.9 blocks, all while shooting 50.1% from the field 
37.3 from three point land. That's your MVP. <clears throat> uh, listen, that's your yeah. MVP. That's your no, no, that's your MVP. Your MVP averaged 20 points a game, nine, re- yeah. nine rebounds, and two blocks. That's your listen. That's your that's your MVP. I didn't pull up uh, uh, the NBA MVP. Uh, stats, but I can't imagine they're too far off. They're way the fuck off. What are you talking about? Not too far. They're way the fuck off. I can't imagine Steph Curry's putting up a whole lot more than 19 points per game. He's putting up damn near 30. Okay. I mean, what is he getting 9.4 rebounds, you think? He's his career is about eight. Is he shooting 50%? He should don't do that. So this this is okay. So here, so this is. This is the issue I'm having with the WNBA. Okay. Wait, go back up to the top. Go back up to the top. She had how many? She had seven. Hmm. She has become the first player in WNBA history with 700, 700 mother points. 700 points. 700 points. You be this. There's never been a woman in 700 points. LeBron James had 700 points his first five. He might have had that just for four years. Are you kidding me? Are you serious In a season, right though. In a season. Listen, listen, no, listen to me. Listen to me, okay? She listen became the – let me read that out again. She became the first player in WNBA history to put up 700 points, 300 rebounds, and 70 blocks in a season. Do you, do, do you, do you know that 4,000 points is in, in a season is, is, is a record in the NBA? No. Yeah. That can't be true. Yeah, it is. Four thousand? That's 4, way more than seven hundred. <laughs> <That's, laughs> that can't be true. That, that is extreme. Who <laughs> you, you don't you don't believe me? Okay. You don't believe me. I'm gonna find it. All um, right, well this this is while you're finding that, let's read out some more awards. Yeah, you go ahead and explain because I'm I i got an issue with all this. Uh rookie of the year, Ren Howard. Again, sorry if it's Ren or Ryan. Uh, Nalissa Smith and Shakira Austin have had their moments, but Howard is the clear winner here. She finished 11th in the league in scoring at 16.2 points per game, added four and a half rebounds, 2.8 assists, and 1.6 steals. Among rookies, she was first in scoring, sixth in rebounding, rebound, rebounding, uh, first in assists, and first in steals. All right. Few rookies in league history have made as much of an immediate impact on both ends of the floor as Howard. Um, and then it just has some more stuff. Are you ready? I'm ready, babe. What do you got? Will Chamberlain scored 4,029 points in a season. One of the greatest of all time. Don't matter. In a season, an average 50.4 points a game. Okay, but was he shooting fifty percent? I'm sure he was shooting well over fifty percent. Listen, okay, these are the women who are pissing and moaning about wanting <laughs> to get paid like LeBron James. <laughs> Your top players don't even come close to the set the the, the middle tier of the NBA. Okay, your your MVP is averaging. Six man in a year point uh, uh, numbers. That's what you're. That's what you're doing. You're averaging six man in a year numbers. Okay, you 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 you're not close. You're not getting paid. There's a reason why people don't want to pay you like they're paying LeBron James. There's a reason why you don't see people walk around with WNBA jerseys. NBA players are being forced to go to these games. They're not going to these games for the out of the, no. They have better things to do. They can be at home playing 2K. Here's a question. And, you know, we as a show, we're going to catch a lot of flack for this. And that's fine. You know, bring on the flack. We love the flack. The football side of things for women did a thing where they had them wear lingerie and play the game. Mm -hmm. To see if that was. This still, it's still active. Do you think basketball needs to adopt that strategy? No. You want to know why? Because it didn't work for the football. Literally, literally, it was at, when it first in the inception, which was like 2006, 2007. Trust me, I was a fan. 
it was literally called the lingerie football league. Yes. These women were in nothing but underwear, bra, shoulder pads, and a helmet. Yep. Don't get me wrong. These weren't your girly girls. These were college athletes, track these star, cheerleaders. They were fit. Yes. No one cared. No one cared. No one cared because it wasn't exciting. No, it was exciting to me because I've seen I seen them get her head pushed in. Okay. <laughs> like she got her ass, but it's it's not entertaining because people think, oh well, we they let them fight. No one cares. That's not what we want to see. We want to see skill. We want to see, we want to see what the what the NFL is putting out. We want to see talent. It wasn't all the talent. It's the wildest be, thing. You literally had women running around in their it, bra and panties, and we still were like, yeah. cheeks hanging out. Cheeks. Still would rather watch sweaty dudes. Still would rather watch the NFL. <laughs> and the thing is, it's with the WNBA. And and Shaq had this conversation with uh I can't think of her name. It's not her name, it's not Skylar. It was the other one, the other light-skinned one. I can't think of her name. Hold anyway, up, did, you, did you know this? I just saw this come across here. What? Uh this says note all WNBA teams are now positionless, so, so players will be listed alphabetically. What the f- <laughs> you see that's, that? That's an interesting move. You see. There's a reason for that, because now you you can't put well you can't put the best center or the best point guard or the best shooting guard or forward. You you got to just put them by. No, listen, it's how do a you competition. Know? Yeah, exactly, how do you know who's the best? Exactly, you it's a competition. And and Shaq said this, and he was having this conversation on TNT, and I can't think of this chick's name, but he he said. He was like, and he literally, he said it to her face. He was like, why don't y'all just lower the rim so y'all can bring in excitement? And she got butt hurt about it. She got her feelings hurt. And and, and the, the, the issue I'm having with that is women nowadays are so hung up on being this independent, this bad, whatever, and they're refusing to take criticism. You already play with a smaller ball. Your three-point line is already closer. Why not lower the rim? This shit here came across my timeline. <laughs> so this is what it really brought the, this is what brought the whole thing about. Uh, Nate had texted me a TikTok video that he saw. Some dude, it was actually a really hilarious video. The guy was just going off about these numbers, but. Uh, yeah, Nate, it, made me, it made me mad. This chick. How you make an all rookie team? <laughs> because last time I checked, all rookie means you did uh, you had a hell of a season. You just wasn't <laughs> you wasn't the best rookie, but you were one of the best rookies. Because yeah. obviously you didn't win rookie of the year, but you were you were on the one team. of the best rookies. Right. If averaging 0.4 points, 0.2 rebounds, 0.3 assists. She didn't average a solid point, a solid rebound or assist. I'm trying to figure out how you average 0.4 points a game. I mean, she what? never cracked five minutes in a game. Or she did, but not often. She's shooting 21% from the field. <laughs> That's not good. That's my, Those are my numbers right there. She All of those numbers are my numbers. She she played four to nine minutes. I know guys in the league that can play four to nine minutes and average well more than these points. I could easily be locked up in Russia for nine years in prison right now with my skills on the basketball court. How in the hell does she get, despite the modest numbers, Thomas is coming off the best game of her pro. What? <laughs> in the blue? Listen. She played a career high twelve minutes and scored a career high six points. What the? F- and that it marked the first time all season that she had scored more than two points in a game. And that got her rookie of the, that got her on the all rookie team. How, it's, bro? It's, how? How? Sometimes you're more of a leader than a scorer. She, she, 
I don't <laughs> I don't understand. You can you can pull every all rookie NBA team. And a near nine of one of them gonna be close. Don't be even close to those numbers. Yeah. They they're surpassed. The how how do you you don't even you're not averaging a full point, and you get, bro, and they want to get paid like LeBron James, and they want to get respected like the NBA. You you <laughs> your your MVP averaged twenty points a game. She averaged, hey. she 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 had 700 points. 700 points for the season? First to do it. The first Well, first to do that 300 rebounds. And 700 points, 300 70. rebounds and 70 Listen to me. Those are those you got to pump those numbers. Those are rookie numbers. You can't do that. <laughs> okay? And then and then the thing is I saw something a while ago and I don't know who what, who the picture was, but it said that she aver- she's the first woman in M- in WNBA history to average three. See that three triple doubles, three. Westbrook does that on a nightly basis. He yes. gonna get every three every game he give you a triple double. You serious? Three, three triple doubles. In, M- in WNBA history, three, bro. Three. I mean, you know. No, 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 no. There's no excuse. They need to lower the rim. You think that would make it better? It would make it a whole hell of a lot better because it would make your shooting percentage better. If you're shooting on a 10-foot rim, right, your three-point line is already closer. If your top player in the in, in your in your league averaged 19 and a half points that's your MVP you have a problem you have a scoring problem because you play the exact same you play the exact same minutes as the men do you need to you need to pull out all the stops you need to make it a visual experience you need to have like a, a funky ball you need to have a DJ you need to have like slime cannons and the uh, the backboard like literally everything you could to the court like everything needs to be extra because the play is last they they don't have if Shaq the answer is simple if you look at Brittany Griner's highlights highlights her dunks are barely dunks right she she barely grazes the rim most of her dunks are like her jumping and coming up short and her just throwing it in there they're not dunks yeah. That's not a dunk. Lower the rim some. Lower the rim. Lower it a foot or two. And then play. Because what is doing, what's happening is your team, your game is so shit that nobody wants to watch it. And you can't get mad because Steph Curry is entire, he can he can pay with his one salary for the year. He can pay everybody's salary. You got to step your game up. No one's wearing your jerseys. No one's watching your games. Your games, no, who, no one even knows your games are on TV. No one cares. It's the real thing is, it's like, it, it's a good idea because at least it would affect, it could affect the level of play, and like that's all it is. It's not, it's not like guys are on some mission to hate on women. It's no. just that when you watch men play the same exact game the same exact way, it's more exciting. So exactly. you need to do other things to jazz it up a bit. Yeah, I want to. I would love to see Brittany Griner put her vagina in someone's face. <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to see her dunk on somebody and then step over them. That's that's a mean vagina. I would too, love to see her dunk on somebody and push them into the crowd like Shaq did. I would that's love to a, see that. A Cold War Russian vagina when that thing comes back. But you you you're not going to see it because you, you can't do it. And then they that's celebrate. The new iron- the, the Iron Curtain to match the drapes. <laughs> and then they celebrate when they dunk. They celebrate like they just won a damn championship for dunking. What are you celebrating for? You look like Patrick Beverly when they won the playing tournament, throwing his jersey like he just won a damn championship. Stop doing that. So this next story here is something kind of big, and I'm very surprised this is that after all this time, all of a sudden – Manti Teo has agreed to make one of the most 
ridiculous, embarrassing, I would crazy, know. like all over the place stories, public yet again. They offered him a shit ton of money. They had to because there's no way you're gonna offer me. You're you're gonna you're gonna say, hey, let's let's I'm gonna pitch this document to you, documentary to you, so you can talk about the worst time of your life in college. No, no, I'm not talking about that shit. And look at this poor man. He had he was a great linebacker. So this from Yahoo News: Ex football star Manti Teo says Jay Z's music. Inspired him to open up about catfish scandal. <laughs> what? Oh, Jay, I need to hear this. This I can't how, wait to hear. How did Jay Z music inspire you to say, I want to talk about the dumb time in my life? From Amber Corinne, Manti Teo, the former NFL linebacker who was involved in the 2012 catfish scandal, is ready to tell his side of the story. The ex Notre Dame football star sat down with CBS Mornings to talk about the experience and revealed why he hadn't spoken about the ordeal. In fact, he shared how attending a Jay-Z concert gave him the courage to speak up. Uh, Cam Jordan, this is a quote from Manti, Cam Jordan with the Saints took a bunch of us teammates to a Jay-Z concert, Teo told the morning show co-host, and at that concert, Jay-Z opens with saying these words, you cannot heal what you don't reveal. And it may have... (laughs) <laughs> and just some random words to everybody. But for me, at that time, it hit me like a ton of bricks. No one cared. No one was talking about that bullshit. So you're telling me <laughs> after all that time, he goes to a flipping Jay-Z concert, and Jay-Z says, you can't heal. This is a guy who says, you know, according to Polynesian Pillars, faith family football. So he's had all this time to go to to hit the Bible, to consult, to confide in his friends and family and <laughs> priests and this and that. And in the end, it's Jay-Z who inspires him to open up about this. Jay-Z, okay. This, <coughs> he was paid. They paid, so him. <coughs> they paid him heavily to do this because there's no way in hell you're going to sit there with a straight face and be like, man, we went to the Jay-Z concert, and Jay-Z said these, these words, and they were just so part. You're a lying piece of shit. That's what you're doing. You're not you're not going to fool me and make me believe that you went to a Jay-Z concert. He spoke some powerful words. And me- no. You're an idiot. They're paying you a lot of money to make an ass of yourself again, and you're about to embarrass your entire family, your entire culture, your entire livelihood for money. You're an asshole. Uh, goes on to say, in 2012, the former San Diego Charger shared a story about his grandmother passing away. Ironically, he thought his girlfriend at the time had died on the same exact day. However, his girlfriend hadn't actually died. She never existed. Bum, bum, bum. The unusual story quickly began to make its rounds in media, developing into a high-profile catfishing dilemma. It has now become the subject of the Netflix documentary, Untold, the girlfriend who didn't exist. You played uh, for Notre Dame. You were a highly, you were a highly rated linebacker coming into the coming into school. You were a top linebacker in the country, and you do this. When I heard about it, I was like, "There's no fucking way." This yeah, you remember good. this pretty well, right? Yeah, I remember. Oh, I remember this because I was excited for this kid because he was fucking amazing on the field. Definitely. Man, was fucking amazing. And then he goes and does this. I'm like, there's no way this is real. Well, the thing is, the thing that really has changed it for me was at the time, the media was like selling it as he was in on it and like created the thing and all to get the extra attention and the Heisman boost and this and that. And this documentary reveals that he was just a, a victim of naivety and circumstance. Like he just plain was, you know, dumb. Like he, the catfishing wasn't really a thing yet. Well, so there was that, and like he believed a lot of crazy excuses from this person about why, like, he couldn't see the her or whatever. It's it's really nuts. And so, then you hear his his her, you know, the the other Lene's side of it, and it's like she's. He, she's in it. She is transitioning now into a she. So there's that going on. So he was and gay. 
What's that? So he was gay. Yeah, the whole time he was just like a gay, uh, suppressed gay man speaking to Manti Teo as this woman. Like, created a profile online, used some random classmate of his uh, picture, uh, made up family members, all this stuff. So you got... <clears throat> here's here, here's my thing. And this is, this is, this is something that I realized, and this is, this is maybe just me. But if I'm talking to somebody, right... And I'm like, hey, let's talk on the phone. I'm t- I hate texting. First and foremost, I don't like texting. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and text back. Like, we, I mean, we can for a little bit, but I want to be on the phone at this point. Yeah. If I say, let's talk, and you're like, yeah, I can't. All right, that's strike one. Hey, let's video chat. Yeah, I can't. That's strike two. Yeah, she would say, like, my phone's cracked or, you know, this or that. Like, pretend <laughs> that the connection was bad. Oh, your connection's bad? Well, guess what? We, 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 our connection is no longer here. So we're done. So you can go and take your shit. So this, this whole, I don't feel bad for people who get catfish. Uh, you got to watch the doc. I don't. I don't feel bad for people. I'm going to watch it just so I can see how stupid this man was. Yeah, the guy lost millions of dollars, like going from the first round to the second round and he all felt- that. He fell down there, what, to the fifth round? No, it was second round. Oh, he, listen, I thought he fell a lot further, too. I thought he went undrafted. I didn't remember that he only went to second round. You cannot, you cannot get catfished like that and then be like, well, I was just naive. No, no, sir. No, 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 no. You, I mean, no, you're, no, like, nope. you're like 20 years old. You're a grown-ass man. No, you're a grown ass man. He he He's was a, older, you're a grown ass man going into the league. A grown ass man. Hey, let's pull up this video real quick and see what this says right yeah. here. From uh, this is the CBS Morning Show. What? Teo said he had no idea the real the man at the center of one of the first high profile catfishing scandals. This is before we even knew what catfishing was. It was a 2012 Notre Dame football star, Manti Teo, became a national inspiration playing through his grief after he said both his grandmother and his girlfriend died. He was also a finalist for the Heisman Trophy that season. But in January 2013, Teo's world came crashing down. Reporters discovered that his girlfriend didn't die. She actually never existed. What? Teo said he had no idea the relationship existed only online. Now, he has always denied being in on this scam, and nearly nine years later, he's telling his story in the Netflix documentary. It's called Untold, nine years ago. The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist. Now, in this clip, Teo shares how alienated he felt after the news of the hoax broke and what it was like when he went into the cafeteria the very next day. Everybody's just kind of talking, you know, talking about whatever. And I turn into the cafe and go silent. And I looked at everybody, and everybody kind of just looked at me and like kind of looked down. And nobody was really talking anymore, and I'm like, okay. And I sat by myself, and that said everything that needed to be said about what my world was like from then on. Yes, Manti Teo joins us now. We are so excited that you're here. I watched the doc. So before he goes on, I like I am kind of interested to see what he has to say here, but. Like in the documentary, it's so like the ascension of this guy and then the immediate crash because you have like he's a star, you know, out out in the islands. And then like he wanted to go to USC, but he chose Notre Dame because it was like a family thing, you know, faith, family football. And obviously Notre Dame is more religious. So he's like, imagine going from this beautiful island paradise to fucking Indiana where it's freezing and cold and everyone's ugly. So that sucks already. Uh, you know, now it's like he's got he's the new kid on campus. He's fresh. He's got to prove himself and all this stuff's going on. And then the ascension of like he's killing it. He's killing it. He's getting better. Everyone loves him. And then they, he gets to his senior season and they have that magical 12 and 0 season. And he's the man. And he's it's like he's got this girlfriend thing going on the side. And now all of a sudden, like when the, the scandal gets found out, which is that I'm missing, I'm like leaving out so much of this Lene person, like this Ron and I, Tuyasa Sopo, and all the craziness with him. Like that, you got to watch the documentary for. But like, 
just to go from rising shooting star, almost winning the Heisman as a defensive player, barely ever happens, you know, wood scene and like nobody since, to then they get absolutely trounced in the championship game against Alabama. You know, Eddie Lacy, TJ Yeldon, they're just running all over the place and destroying them. And then hours later, finds out the whole thing is like, just gets busted open. It's, it's just, so now, You lose the millions because you don't get taken in the first round. And everyone goes from, uh, he says that, he goes, everyone goes from, oh, my God, there's Manti Teo to, oh, my God, that's Manti Teo. (laughs) You know, it's just the, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I I got a question. I, I got a question. How do you think you have a girlfriend that you've never seen? I mean, that's, this guy was. No, no. You got to watch. I don't magical act. I don't care how desperate you are for sex. You do not say you have a girlfriend you have not seen. You know what screwed him? Uh, His cousin. His cousin initially fell for this dude's catfishing scheme. So when Manta was like, "Hey, have you ever heard of this person, Lene Kakua?" His cousin was like, "Oh yeah, talk to her all the time." (laughs) So yeah. So at that point. Now there's someone that I need to throw hands with first. <laughs> and then I need to throw hands with the other person because yeah. there's no way. I'm here's the thing. I'm here's the it, here's the problem I'm having. I don't understand how you get catfish to begin with. 2012. I get it if it was the 90s, early it 2000s. Was early. This was early. I'm, that was 2012. Early. 2012, you still had the you still had the video chat, you still had the fate. You had you had these things. You had there cell were, phones. There the, were definitely red flags. You you had the computer in your hand. 2012, it was yes, it was 10 years ago, but at the same time, you the technology. I'm not. It, 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 I'm not gonna say it was that far off. You still had similar things. The, the, is, are the phones better? Absolutely. But yeah. you still had the technology. There's no way. If this was 1999 going into 2000, 2001, hey, guess what? We still had dollop at that time. All right. <laughs> I get it. You don't get a pass on this. You don't. You you got catfish. You 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 were the you were the man on campus. You were man on the field. You were the top linebacker. They had him. Dr- I think if this shit, if this shit doesn't happen, he's going first, first or second. It seemed that way. It definitely first, seemed like this whole thing cost first him first. Or second round. pick. He his name. He's coming off that board early. And you go and get catfished by a man who shouldn't even be breathing at this point. But <laughs> that's here no there. You got catfished. And you know how the league is. You know how the NFL is. The moment there's any form of scandal, off-field issues, anything that pops up, it's a done deal. Look at the guy that was from Miami. He got caught smoking weed. Went from the top pick to number 13. You know how much money you lose from from 1 to 13? That's a lot of fucking money. Let me uh, let me play the trailer for you and see if we can get uh, an image of this person for you. Manti Teo had an absolutely, absolutely astounding senior year. He said his mother and girlfriend when they could have died the same night. He dedicated his season to them. It was an amazing story. I'm a really old man. I'm not saying. I can't wait to see this dude. His girlfriend died the same night. I don't, I don't think, think anyone, anyone can appreciate how the story, story became. This, this was, was a very, very sophisticated hoax perpetrated for reasons we can't understand. At this, this point, point, I'm not going to ask you that. that? I, don't I don't know what to think. think. And I can't oh, that was like a... Oh. Oh. It was like a messenger chat. Play, you could definitely see something was up. We just thought, what sick joke is someone trying to put on us? My uncle immediately said, I think you're getting kept. Right. What the fuck is that? There it is. What was that? That's uh, that's Rene, Rene, Rene and I. I'd have beat the, I'd have beat the, I'd beat the bitch out of him. Oh, you, you want to be a woman? I'm gonna beat it out you. What? So, 
You yeah, fat, let me see. Ugly... Uh, that is him in high school. Do you understand? This man cost you your career. <laughs> he didn't just cost you millions. He cost you your. There's a reason why he's not in the league anymore. Nobody wants to touch him. This human potato. I'd have beat the. I, I'd have beat you in the shape. That's how long I'd have whooped that ass. I'd have whooped that ass to you were in shape. There's no way you just took my career from me because you were for. And I guarantee you, it had to be because he was jealous. Well, it, yeah, it's, I, I, I had. I have a feeling that there's jealousy behind why what happened happened. You definitely gotta if you have the time again, you know, watch it make oh, it get time because it I, seems I, like I, this this person clearly has a lot of things going on inside of them. Clearly. I would stump inside, outside. I'm going to stump your insides till they come out of your body. <laughs> he cost you you gotta see what what this whole story cost Matt Ty Tail. Yeah, like it cost him being a first round draft pick. It cost it, him his confidence. It, it cost, cost him his him. confidence. It cost him his career. Because when something in the league like this happens, yeah. when something notable like this happens, nobody wants you around because you're a distraction now. Now you're the guy who had a fake girlfriend. The Chargers drafted you. They took a chance. And because your confidence was already shot, you didn't last very long. The Saints tried you. You didn't make it. You played a couple years with them. And then that was it. They you you bounced out the league. You yeah. you cannot. If I was to get catfished, I'm the only person to blame for that. I'm the only person to blame for that. There's no way in hell, no way on this God green earth that you're gonna catfish me. I've never seen you, I've never heard your voice. You on drugs if you think that's gonna happen. No, and you can I, I need to meet you. I want to see your face because I don't want to hope that you're just some fat guy behind a computer. I need to see we need to meet up somewhere. Yeah, this this certainly uh this is one of those stories that I mean made people more aware of this type of shit. Like Man. I think uh there was a catfish movie out before yeah. this, but like the after this movie with the guy uh, like made the TV Neil show Robinson, after this, and then yeah. the TV show came. I don't, you, you can't, and, and I watched the Catfish TV show, and, and it's all the same shit, bro. It's yeah. all the same stuff. It's this person's, first of all, there's no way in hell I'm falling in love. I'm not, I'm going to be in a relationship with someone for two years, and I hadn't heard their voice once. I hadn't seen their oh, face once. This person's voice was convincing. Like they show him going on Dr. Phil and like doing the voice. You, I need to see your face. We yeah. need to meet. I'm in, I'm a top prospect in go, I'm potentially going into the league and you don't want to meet me. That's a problem. That's a big ass red flag. Yeah, get this. So, uh, this Renee, uh, you know, Ron and I, you know, Lene is mm -hmm. the alias as the girl. He pretends that uh, she, Lene, uh, dies of leukemia, supposedly. Like, this guy actually calls Manti Teo as, like, he, when he calls as himself, like, as Renai Tuyasasopo, he's mm -hmm. pretending to be, like, Lene's cousin, like, Renai Kyuku or whatever. So mm -hmm. he calls up Manti, says that Lene died of leukemia. So this is when he thinks that she's dead, right? Like, his grandmother had died. Now he thinks his girlfriend's dead, and there's this whole like national championship thing is happening. Later on, the guy is not yet ready to let go of his relationship to Manti Teo. So he then tries to call Manti back as Lene, already dead, and try to convince Manti that he actually faked the death. And now Manti's like, oh, this is where you're like, okay, dude, you are just beyond naive at this point. But then, get this. So Manti's like, no, this is crazy. I need proof. Send me a picture of yourself with the date with you doing this, right? So you're like, okay, well, how the hell is this guy going to pull that off? You're clearly screwed. It cuts to the episode finishes. You're like, oh, great, teaser, you know. Next episode comes on. 
this dude reached out because I remember I told you the the picture he used was a classmate of his. Uh huh. This guy reached out to the classmate and made up an entire fucking story about one of his family members dying and how to cheer him up. They would like a photo, you know, if you could send a photo doing this to cheer them up. So, dude, just imagine, like, to create such a narrative. You're already balls deep in this spider web with Manti Teo, and now you're lying to another person to get them to send this. I mean, just to give you a peek behind the curtain of how insane the whole what? thing is. Like, yeah. No, so Manti gets that picture and is like, holy shit. <laughs> She's still alive. <laughs> it's insane. And he found that out. Dude, he found that out two days before the Heisman ceremony. So he had the whole low of low of thinking she's dead, losing the title game, this and that, the, the blah, blah, blah. And then goes to the Heisman award ceremony with Johnny Manziel sitting right next to him. Two days later after this whole nightmare of is Lene dead or not dead? Like, I cannot imagine being in this dude's headspace that whole time. Here's the problem. <laughs> It's insane. The bitch said she was dead. Yeah. Somebody called and said she was dead. Yeah. It's the cousin, allegedly. Bill Moran's in the house. Do you think Rodman rescues Brett? And, and you, 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 you say she's dead. And then you get a phone call. At this point, she's dead of leukemia after being in a bad car crash and going through that whole thing with her. From said individual. Yep. No, bro. No. Man, Tio deserves whatever. From the dead. Man, Tio. I might say I'm not dead. Man, Tio deserved everything and anything that he got. He deserved every bit of it. You cannot be. <laughs> this dude, get this. It goes even further. They met in real life. They met, and Manti had, like, no... He was meeting him as the cousin, he thought. After she'd passed away, this guy was like, come meet, you know, meet my baby sister or whatever. This dude actually brought a literal family member of his to meet Manti Teo as this fake freaking... It was unbelievable. <laughs> like, there's there's footage of it and everything. Cell phone I footage. Got, is I don't... The problem with me watching this is probably going to make me hate man Titanic. Oh, it's going to make you very angry. You're going to be mm -hmm. mad at More that. More than I already do. But for... Because now he's like, he's oh, he, she, I, you know, I'd hate to dead name him, but he, man, she's like... I'm beating, this. He, she, I'm, beating the gen, I'm beating the gender <laughs> out of you. Understand that. I'm going to beat the gender out of you. That is... It's just, it, you know, is it, wraps up, it wraps up with man Titanic being like, you know, I'm okay... You know, my football career sucked, and you know, I'm, I'm better now. But like, that was the worst time of my life. And the, the, the Renai, this one and I is like, oh my god, I've been able to open up ever since, and I'm in such a great place. And she's like doing this Polynesian dance. He's and a just, lying piece of sh this such little individual remorse. ruined your life. Yeah, he took your career from you, and you're sitting there. Oh, I'm okay. While this motherfucker is enjoying his life. No, I'm taking your life. <laughs> Understand that. You don't yeah. get joy. You took my joy. You destroyed my joy. You took money out of my pocket. You took money from my family. You you ruined my NFL career because nobody wants. It's like the whole Michael Sam situation. Michael Sam was one hell of a player, but nobody wanted to deal with him because of the situation that they were in. Uh, to some extent. No, nobody wanted that. The Rams like he, drafted when the Rams drafted him, they cut him as quickly as they possibly could. Even though he showed out in the preseason, they got rid. They was like, mm -mm, we don't want this shit. Mm -mm, we gotta let him go. He just plain like wasn't good. I feel like he was a pretty decent player. You don't like make in college. He, definitely in was, he was okay in college, but you kind of eventually learned it was more like Shane Ray was the reason he was good. That's all. I, that's what I. You don't make co-defensive player of the year in, in the SEC just being by okay. I mean, you're you, I'm easy. sure we could go back and list many a dude who was a co-defensive player of the SEC and they didn't pan out to be shit. <laughs> but it 
for me, the whole thing is, is this is stupid. This is a stupid situation. Manti Teo, this person ruined his life, his career, everything, and he is enjoying his life now. You're not getting any joy. You won't be able to smile another day in your life for fear of looking over your shoulder. There's just no way. If you ruin my life like this, I'm going to punch you for the rest of the years. This is going to sound really, you know, uh, dark and weird, but I'm very glad that Manti didn't kill himself because someone in his position, when you're talking about... He could have easily killed himself. When you're talking about the Polynesian pillars of faith, family, football, well, your faith is now shooken because everyone thinks you're gay. You know, uh, your family is looking at you all weird because they probably never had, you know, are they wondering you're gay and your football career has been ruined now. So, I mean, three pillars of your life have been ruined. You could uh, easily, easily, if he'd killed himself, people would have been like, wow, very tragic. And this is why he did it. I, I bro, at the end of the day for me, it's you. So that's a, a testament to him, I'm saying. I'm not – anyone coming in late on this, I'm saying I think it showed it shows great character, and I hope he had a great support network and all of those things to go through what he went through and still be what he is today. I would be, be I would be beating this individual <laughs> until I got tired, literally. You've made clear the violence you feel about this individual. Because it takes a fucked up human being to do some shit like that. It I really, mean, really does. Anyone who hasn't seen it, if you have Netflix, if you have a, a family or friends Netflix account, by all means, get on there. Check out the new doc, Untold. I believe it's called My Non-Existent Dead Girlfriend. You'll find it. That's one of the most popular things on there right now. I can't uh, watch we, we need to check up. Uh, we need to catch up on Hard Knocks, man. Yes, definitely. Uh, I missed the last couple episodes, so I can't wait to jump on there now. See what I've been missing. You know, this lines that uh, Falcons game is going to be on there for sure. So for sure, it's on there for sure. Up, man. Uh, any message you have for the MFers before we get out of here? Don't be like Man Tateo. That's all That's I got to say. Don't be Man Tateo. Okay, be smart. Man we love you. Be safe out there. People, don't know who you're talking to, okay? In this day and age, take Manti's story and use it, okay? Do not get catfished, as they pretty much just said. And don't be like John Cruden. If there's an opportunity to present yourself, take it. That's it. Very good, too. I like that. All right, guys. All right, MFers. Every Monday, uh, we had a little switch up here this week. Obviously, it's Tuesday. It was not 930, but... Usually, every Monday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be here. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week.